In this example, I'd like to use the virtual work uh, theorem to determine the deflection of a cantilever or beam with a tip load P. So in this case, the space of solutions S uh, is comprised of functions that have zero motion, zero rotation at x equals zero. So we measure x from the support. And the space of test functions V consists of functions that have the exact same properties. Uh, and I'm going to look at an approximate solution using a subspace of S. So these are going to be functions V that consist of both quadratic and cubic polynomials. So this is my approximation space, so this is a subset of S, and we'll use a similar structure for the space of test functions or variations. So they too will have a parameter, del A times x squared plus del B x cubed, and this is also a proper subset of the space of admissible variations, V. And so, and we're going to use the virtual work theorem, which says that the external virtual work, so in this case P del V times L, is equal to the internal virtual work, so that's integral 0 to L, of the internal moment times the virtual curvature, so two derivatives of V with respect to X, dx. And the way that we do this is we plug in the two functional forms for the solutions and the test functions into the virtual work equation. So if we plug in on the left side, we have P, the test function evaluated at L. So that is del A L squared plus del B L cubed. And then on the other side of the equation, we're going to have the integral 0 to L EI times the virtual curvature associated with the real motion. So the moment again is EI times the curvature, so EI two derivatives of V. So I need EI times two derivatives of V, which is going to give me 2A plus 6BX. And then the virtual curvature will have the exact same form, except we just have del A's. So 2 del A plus 6 del BX dx. So I can integrate this out, and I'm going to rearrange this a little bit, so I'm going to write in the following fashion. It will look a little bit unusual, but it's a good way of writing it. So PL squared, PL cubed. So I'm breaking apart the terms that are associated with del A and those associated with del B minus, so I'm going to bring everything from the, the right hand side over, EI times the matrix 4L, 6L squared, so that's the del A part of it, 6L squared, 12L squared, that's the del B part terms from there, times AB, so you have to kind of write it out and look at it, dot product with del A and del B is all equal to zero. This is my virtual work equation. This needs to hold true for all test functions, and in particular that means for all del A and for all del B. The only way for this to be equal to zero for all del A and del B is for what's in the square brackets here to be zero. So we end up with a set of linear equations, EI, 4L, 6L squared, 6L squared, 12L cubed, that was an error up there, AB is equal to PL squared, PL cubed. So I can solve these two linear equations, and that will tell me what A and B are. So A, my solve will be PL over 2 EI, and B will be equal to minus P over 6 EI. And so I get a final result of V of X is equal to PL squared over 6, or sorry, 2 EI. Let's erase that. minus px cubed over 6ei. So that is my two-term approximate virtual work expression for this problem here. And it happens to be, in this case, this is actually exact. So just like with potential energy methods, if the subset that you guess, in this case S tilde here, 
in the case that I, I pick a subset here that includes the exact solution, I actually end up with the exact solution down over here.